are going to see Drainer. He's a composition that we've seen them play to success a bunch of times. The weakness obviously there, and that's why Valet going to be teching in. Will change my mind, be able to take the ever so important blind pick. Big bad boy, Shadow Priest, Valet steps into the blind pick, and this is what I think changed my mind. We're hoping for if the pumpers had blind locked their balance to a death knight I would say that they could potentially take change my mind on pumpers once again pinned at a pillar facing a frost mage They were able to overcome ABC and now they have to overcome change my mind with a similar strategy So will trainer be able to find those moments to get aggressive and net a kill for his team? Or will he be dismantled by the crowd control of change my mind because Change my mind throughout the entire day has had perfect crowd control. So if a team was going to shut down a misfavor, it's, it's going to be them. Yeah, I think Valet is a relatively vulnerable target if he overextends and gets caught into a grip, a death grip, into Asphyxiate Stun or Stormbolt, and the Pumpers can ride that momentum. I think they can shred through a lot of the defensives he has available. Oh. So Farm and Poiki getting swapped too as he moves in. Triple Intimidating Shout coming in from Nerd Rage, looking to generate huge pressure for his team. Varkskin traded out by Min Poike, Vampiric Embrace from Belay with a silence on a trainer though. Nerd Rage is the one that's under the most pressure. Icy Beans gets traded out by Fried Kitty as early on, changed my mind, looking to take a quick win. Are they gonna get a die by the sword or even maybe a kill here? Drainer manages to sneak in Live Cocoon right before getting Psychic Screamed. War Banner denies any incoming crowd control afterwards and Nerd Rage will recover, but that was a lot of their defense traded. Now, though, it's their turn to attack. Way of the Crane activated, denied. Great polymorph timing by Fried Kitty. Now developing more momentum potentially for the team. Mind Freeze breaks the chain. Drainer gets to stay on target. Nope, rolls away, decides, all right, it's enough time out in midfield, and this is what they've had to do against these Wizard Cleaves is how much further can they chase? Valet is baiting them. This is not a good position for, Dra for Nerd Rage. Drainer is silenced. Nerd Rage leaps out, but it might be too late. Die by the sword forced, even with Nerd Rage already positioned at the pillar. Potentially still going down if Fried Kitty can get a polymorph. Fried Kitty gets gripped back out of line of sight. Nerd Rage still struggling to recover. Drainer's very afraid of a blink counter spell at this moment of time. That's why he's not even opening up his school of magic for soothing mist, just relying on his Jade statue to heal while they're taking zero damage behind the pillar. Then mounting up an assault towards Valet, leg sweep, but Cervantes is on Fried Kitty. This is another strategy we've seen in the past from the pumpers while they'll send one melee, so in this case, Cervantes after one caster, which is Fried Kitty, and the one on one and disrupt and deal damage. Then Nerd Rage will go after the other caster, Valet, and disrupt his damage and get better uptime. It's an interesting stall based tactic for a melee cleave versus spellcaster, but you have to pick your moments of time when you decide to convene on one target. That's usually when Drainer activates Way of the Crane. So I'm curious to see how they reposition from this stall based split damage strategy to one big swing with the Way of the Crane. If they can't coordinate together on that big swing, then they're not going to get any defensive cooldowns. Although stalling could be a way for them to win on mana. We'll have to see how that plays out. Yeah, definitely. And like I kind of talked about, as dampening gets higher, and if Cervantes and Nerd Rage can have high uptime on Valet, they can eventually take him down. But it's just so punishing with Fried Kitty able to free cast. He's really getting a lot of value out of his Frostbolt build, I assume, is what he's running. I'm going to quickly check here to see exactly what talents Fried Kitty is running because I think it would be intelligent for him to be running uh, a build where if he is able to just free cast, he can put a huge pressure as Valet is likely the primary target. That allows him to build up a lot of momentum for his team and really punish uh, the pumpers for staying and spending too much time in the open. Yeah, see what they can get done. Still split DPS strategy right now for the pumpers, playing it slow and steady against Change My Mind. Neither team really making an aggressive push just yet. Cervantes activates Apocalypse and that Abomination. Perhaps Cervantes should be attacking the Shadow Priest. That Abomination is so easily avoided with a Link and a Frost Nova. A lot of the extra damage that Death Knight brings with his ghoulish army is going to be negated with one spell cast from the Mage. So how do, how do you feel about that? Do you, do you think maybe Nerd Rage should be on the Mage instead and Cervantes on the Shadow Priest? I guess with the Warrior on the Shadow Priest, you limit the self-healing with the Mortal Strike, but you lose some damage. And still, Nerd Rage is taking huge punishment. But how do you feel about the targeting from the team of the Pumpers? Well, a Warrior on a Frost Mage is still yeah. just as... <laughs> it's not really an ideal situation. <laughs> he he He's becomes the abomination. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's going to be turning in Nerd Rage into a waddling abomination in the matchup, so I think it's more important that Cervantes, uh, with some of the tools that the Death Knight has available, like the Death's Advance, he's going to be able to have more uptime on to Fried Kitty and limit the damage he can put out. Nerd Rage, I think it's intelligent. He's on delay, but I like that he moves over and uh, puts
puts his damage on Fry Kitty occasionally as well, forcing Minpoike to focus a little bit more on single target healing. But the thing is, in this matchup so far, Minpoike has been able to do whatever he wants. Really, Change My Mind is not under too much pressure. He's been able to sit back, he's throwing out solar ass, he's been able to sit down for a drink. Minpoike is just enjoying a beautiful sunny day at this point in the match, but things are going to start getting really intense for Change My Mind, especially if the pumpers can hold on for a little bit longer. This composition they run in particular seems to really excel at that 20 to 30% dampening mark. That's when Sharpened Blade with dampening is going to be ultra effective at really reducing the healing that Poike has available. And that's when we're going to see massive cooldown overlaps. Counterspell and Drainer putting him behind. Deeper into dampening. Cervantes is going to be a, a liability with a situation like that occurring again later on. There's no real opening anymore. Uh, since this split DPS strategy has slowed the game down quite a lot, any advantage or edge either team had or Leon is basically reset. It's, and now Minpoike caught in crowd control. Drainer is trying to get a, he gets counterspelled again. Fried Kitty is nailing these. And Drainer can't afford that. He's getting crowd controlled further by Silence. Now into a bash. Cervantes, are you going to trade? Icebound Fortitude allows him to break out of the stun. Overlapped with the life cocoon. And Pumpers look like they're starting to panic. Yeah, I mean... It does get scary for them the longer they stay in the open, especially with the build that Changed My Mind is running. In particular, Fried Kitty is really opting into that frothable damage, actually playing Lonely Winter as well. So he sacrifices his Water Elemental, gives him empowered single target damage, and that's when he can start really ripping in with those Shatter combos with the Frostbolt Flurry. Ice Lances putting out massive damage. Drainer pushing in, gets Polymorphed on his way to the crane, unfortunately, but does manage to top off his team. Belay looking for some pressure here. Drainer getting feared away. Good crowd control from Change My Mind. What can they get done with it? Third Rage sitting in defensive stance, trying to move away. Big shatter combo landing by Fried Kitty. But Nerd Rage behind the pillar should ultimately be able to stabilize. We'll get looking for a Cyclone as Drainer rolls away from that, avoiding crowd control. Nice positioning by the pumpers. Now we're looking at a reset. Yeah, complete reset between the teams. The advantage now, though, in favor of Change My Mind with Icebound Fortitude on cooldown for another minute and 39 seconds. Crowd control secured. If Fried Kitty and Valet can coordinate some damage here, this would be an opportunity. But if they can't, then Drainer is likely on diminishing return, which means he'll freely be able to activate Wave the Crane in four more seconds. And with Wave the Crane activated, his damage will be a lot higher. I'm curious to see if he wants to take this window to utilize it. Getting Cyclone now, exposing himself to try and get aggressive later could cost him the game. Nerd Rage Spell Reflex leap backs away, barely survives. Drainer Silence now. Polymorph Diminishing Return likely has faded. Life Cocoon die by the sword. Cooldown overlap. Change my mind. Secure their lead. Yep, definitely. That was a big defensive cooldown overlap there. We got die by the sword. Life Cocoon, Anti-Magic Zone, Cervantes Trinketed. Nerd Rage uses Fire Blood Racial with the Dark Iron Dwarf, so Pumpers don't have a lot left to work with, and Drainer opting into Relentless does not have a PvP trinket available to break out of crowd control with a Gladiator's Medallion, but unfortunately, it changed my mind. Wasn't able to really get too much done with that Polymorph. Cervantes still marching, trying to chase down Fried Kitty. Fried Kitty with good positioning, pulling him out in the open, and at this point in the game, Cervantes is going to have to think twice about chasing uh, Fried Kitty into the open, as that's when Valet and Fried Kitty can really get out significant damage in terms of mana. Minpoike still has a lead over Drainer. Now Minpoike pushing in, gets the crowd control on the Drainer. Cervantes very exposed here in midfield. Valet has to try to back Fried Kitty up just a little bit, get some damage rolling. If they can continue the crowd control chain, this could be scary, but also for the pumpers, they're starting to generate some pressure. Fried Kitty getting a little bit low. Minpoike's gonna have to play catch up with no innervate available, potentially wasting a whole bunch of mana. And the pumpers are looking solid here, but still Cervantes, he, he has to be a little bit careful. Valet not running critical strike as a priority stat, running haste and versatility to try and make himself more durable and to make it deeper into dampening with more mana. Fried Kitty as well running that build with more haste and versatility. I do like this strategy from Change My Mind because at 50% dampening, they're just going to kill Cervantes on that death knight. So making themselves as durable as possible to extend that game as long as they can seems to be the best option. Will that build difference be enough to overcome the extra bonus damage from Way of the Crane? So far, it looks good. Cervantes gets denied from his anti-magic shield, but even still, Drainer dispels it, now activated, protects himself. The split damage strategy starting to sink in a little bit more deep now at 30% dampening, and, and Poike may need to look to try and reset his mana here shortly. Fried Kitty gets stunned up, but no 
everybody connecting on the stun. And this is what I was saying earlier in the match is, sure, the split strategy maximizes your damage and diminishes the amount of damage that the spellcasters do, but you're really not threatening a kill with only one member on the target. At certain points in the game, all three need to convene on the same player, usually during a stun. So a stun right now, which is on diminishing return, another big mistake by the pumpers, would have been a good opportunity for all three members to just connect, burst down a target, and try and get an ice block. They're not really coordinating that well together, and they're not finding any openings as a result. Yeah, Blade getting a little bit low, and Vlake having to use a lot of mana there. Drainer finally with a mana lead here. Sharpened Blade activated. Storm Bolt as well. Vlake could be forced into the dispersion. Fried Kitty trying to counter pressure with the Ray of Frost. Manages to find some damage, but really not enough to force Cervantes and Mervage to back off. 35% dampening. This is going to get spicy for both teams. Drainer, how is he going to keep his team alive? He has the way the crane available. He really has to pick his moment. And without the trinket available, he needs to try to get put onto diminishing returns. If he gets polymorphed up, after that is an opportunity for him to push in. Or if he can get a nice double leg sweep, which he does manage to find. Fraud Kitty getting low, forced into the ice block. And that's his icy veins as well. This is when he really wants to get aggressive. Jumping out of the ice block, landing the full polymorph onto Drainer. Now Nerd Rage a little bit vulnerable. Really getting low. And Poiki doing a good job topping off his team. Actually sat down for a drink. Used his Innervate. That was a perfectly timed Innervate by Minpoike as both members were low. And he had to expend a lot of mana. So intelligently done. But at the time being, the Pumpers have completely stabilized. They still have a lot of defensive cooldowns to rotate through. And they managed to get that ice block from Fraud Kitty, who still hasn't used his cold snap. He just used cold snap. So now doesn't have that third ice block available for about five minutes. Probably won't get a third ice block in the game. The Pumpers finally coordinating together and forcing priority defensive cooldowns. Good evasive maneuvers. Nerd Rage saw crowd control and Drainer and said, all right, I'm not going to get any healing. So I can't be out in the middle of the map anymore. It's time to heroic leap back to a pillar and cast some first aid bandage himself up and wait for Drainer to get out of crowd control. Spending a lot of time at the pillar, and this is now the danger. Cervantes doesn't have Heroic Leap on the Death Knight. He's going to have to waddle his way back to the pillar. And while he waddles, he takes a lot of damage, and it's 50% dampening. It's unlikely that he will be able to recover from that amount of damage. Cervantes gets bashed up before he can duck around the corner. More casted spells incoming. The pumpers start to fall behind, and Drainer now has to make a choice. When is he going to go for it? When are they going to go for the way of the crane? Are they going to do a death grip strategy? Try and pin Fried Kitty behind the pillar. That's what they're going to do. Fried Kitty trinkets and blinks away to escape to safety. Good reaction time by Fried Kitty, stalling out what could have been a scary moment. Yeah, definitely, but Cervantes still has uptime. You can see the abomination waddling towards Fried Kitty. If that has uptime, it's going to cause significant damage. He needs to try to kite that. Both Filet and Fried Kitty getting low. Fried Kitty could potentially fall. Nerd Rage has to trade out the Dive of the Sword with the Interrupt onto Drainer. He activates Way of the Crane, but he gets feared on it. Big punish here from Change My Mind. Can they take down Nerd Rage? He's sitting in the anti-magic zone. Heroic leaps away, just trying to avoid damage at all costs. It's going to be very difficult for Drainer to actually top him back off. He has the Life Cocoon coming up in a few seconds. Nerd Rage just has to hold on. Bash coming in from Poike. Drainer trades out the Everyman for himself. Get out of that stun, connect the Life Cocoon, but at 49% dampening, that's really not going to be doing too much. Fried Kitty in the meantime also taking a significant amount of damage. He blinks away. Nerd Rage cannot afford to uh, follow up. And unfortunately for the Pumpers, Changed my mind, we're able to get a ton of defensive cooldowns at the cost of basically nothing. Yeah, it's a race to the finish in the final moments of this game. You have to make a risky decision and go all out for a kill. This is one of those games where we may see a cross kill. It could come down to a two versus two and an exchange likely between Nerd Rage and Fried Kitty. Fried Kitty right now is ahead. He's got Ice Block, so he should be able to kill off Nerd Rage, then survive with that Ice Block. Now they're splitting up some of their damage onto Valet, maybe trying to switch the heal over time effects. They bait an Iron Bark. Now Iron Bark won't be available. With Icy Veins activated, Fried Kitty is ready to close this game out. Tons of damage following that up. Perfect combo execution. Fried Kitty closes it out. Change my mind, win the blind pick, and if history repeats itself, likely to win the series now. It, that is the really important thing to know. It was three... Just throw us back to the previous series very, very quickly when Change My Mind actually played against Plot Twist. It was on this map. It was against uh, Rezus and Numbless uh, and uh, Infernium playing that Warlock, Mistweaver, Windwalker. And that Mistweaver in that match, he was crowd-controlled pretty much the entire match. So, uh, I mean... 
they're playing the same matchup essentially with the rogue mage versus a mist weaver but there's a lot of more uh, disruption on the side of the pumpers here still though if they can replicate what they were able to do in that game with how they uh, crowd controlled they could even take this map right here and make it 2-0 all right let's see if change my mind is going to be able to do it or if the pumpers are going to be able to even out the scale of this series change my mind have been on point all day aside from maybe that one double destro flop of been poike but really everything out outside of that has been perfect on their part so today could be the day that they overcome this matchup disadvantage although fried kitty getting bursted down early on just really trying to blink to safety has that ray of frost fully channeled with icy veins cervantes denies with that anti-magic zone nerd rage protected by that purple barrier but drainer still crowd controlled cervantes crowd controlled now nerd rage in a three on one disarms acro to try and deny some pressure but glyre's maledict is absorbing a lot of healing life cocoon forced from drainer early on a significant lead for change my mind beautiful cyclone Definitely Nerdridge going to be frozen in that last little bit of the life cocoon. Not going to get much value. Acro with a beautiful smoke bomb play. Can he take Nerdridge down? Drainer finds the heals that he needs with a nice cyclone. I think that was stolen by Cervantes. So Dark Simulacrum going to be used by Cervantes in this matchup. And Poike and Fried Kitty need to make sure that he's not taking critical spells like the Polymorph as well as the Cyclone. If Cervantes can take those consistently, it's going to be extra crowd control for his team that he can steal and that gets his team a lot of pressure and momentum and in that case actually kept his team alive so really well done there by Cervantes and we've been seeing him make really good plays with that ability in this matchup definitely a threat on that death knight drainer Cervantes nerd rage all three of them don't have a trinket and that is not what you want against a team like uh, change my mind especially with the way they've been crowd controlling with their rogue mage druid change my mind potentially just one good setup away from closing out this game all right, let's see if they can execute on it. They've got a huge window of time to net that kill. Acro gets leg sweeped by Drainer. It's more of a preemptive play to try and stall it out, but Acro and Fried Kitty aren't falling for it. They've still got a huge opening. The Ring of Peace stalls it a little bit longer. Acro can't connect. They want to be attacking Nerd Rage. They don't want to be attacking this Death Knight. Too difficult, too durable to take on too er this early on. Fried Kitty's got Blizzard right on top of all those Apocalypse Ghouls. That was well-timed by Fried Kitty. He can then reduce the cooldown of his Frozen Orb. Well done. Let's see if he can get some pressure out. He's fully loaded on Icicles. Maybe they swapped a Drainer. He's expecting that. He activated Fortified Elixir, expecting a swap to himself. But then they didn't do it. They play it so patiently. They still have 25 seconds to kill Drainer if they want to swap. He might even pre-Life Cocoon. He po transcendence portals away from Acro. Acro shadow steps then to Nerd Rage. Gets gripped away. Can't connect to Drainer. They do want to kill Drainer. He just got flurry comboed. But Acro couldn't make it. He's trying to get there. He fully kidney shots him. He pre-Life Cocoons, but he pre-Life Cocooned the wrong target. Drainer's fully exposed. And with that tiny opening, change my mind, take it. What? <laughs> now, I don't know what Drainer was thinking there. This guy, he is very, very good at just avoiding crowd control altogether. So um, I, I, it, it has to be also just that they think it's a bit better for them that they can potentially just sustain uh, a longer period of time on a map like uh, Tolburn Arena. Well, I think that one thing that this map does somewhat show us here in this series also is the Pumpers are in a pretty dire situation. The other thing that says that is the score for it. Change my mind trying to knock them out of the tournament right here, right now in the last series and potentially the last game of the day. Yeah, let's see if they can do it here. Change my mind have been on point, although their compositions aren't suited for the current meta. They've still just been consistent, and that's the name of the game for them to qualify to that spring final later this year. They're looking solid against the pumpers overall. They've definitely polished up their rogue mage. If rogue mage suddenly becomes the meta, I wonder if change my mind even just takes the next cup if that's the case if the meta shifts that way we do it does appear to be the case here as the pumpers lock in their worst map to try and get a more favorable comp matchup they want to avoid the shadow priest mage on tolveron so instead running it into the rogue mage here drainer portaling back to the pillar needs to get out of line of sight that side wall not going to be enough to avoid the incoming polymorphs for now smoke bomb gets dropped that baits drainer to roll in no crowd control though initiated off the back. You'd normally see the mage cast polymorph just as Drainer rolls in, but Fried Kitty not taking advantage of that. Vendetta activated. Life Cocoon easily exchanges for that. There's no smoke bomb threat. There's no icy veins threat. If you're the pumpers, you start getting aggressive now. Yeah, definitely. Drainer's been having excellent positioning on this matchup, or in this matchup, like Zico is kind of alluding to. 
makes it really difficult for Fried Kitty to actually land any sort of polymorph. Sacro tries to set him up with the cheap shot, but Cervantes and Nerdrage always available to back him up, and Drainer always has an exit plan. He puts himself in a position where Fried Kitty has to use blinks, and when he does, Drainer can easily just port or roll away. That always just seems to be ahead of Change My Mind in terms of positioning, at least on this map. Once again, Fried Kitty looking for a polymorph off the back of that cheap shot from Acro, but Drainer is protected by Nerdrage and Cervantes, and now Change My Mind hasn't really been able to find too much crowd control in this matchup whatsoever. So maybe on this map, with how Drainer's playing and how they're positioning, it seems to actually be in favor of the Pumpers, at least at this point. Yeah, it's looking better and better for them here. If the Pumpers can take Tolveron out of the map pool, they still got Ashamanes. I mean, that's just as bad in my opinion. So Change My Mind have set themselves up well for success here. Blind attempt. Let's see what they can manage to pull off this. Acro Shadow Step kicks the trinket. Fried Kitty Frost Novus to set up for a polymorph. Not able to find it. Instead, just deciding to retreat away and avoid the avatar. Although Acro sets up Fried Kitty well with those cheap shots. Surprised to see no polymorph attempt. Fried Kitty focused way more on defense. Potentially even Poike trying to sit down for a drink, and that's exactly what's going on. Rather than getting aggressive and overextending, Fried Kitty just playing it calm, cool, and collected for a late game advantage. Now with a significant mana lead. We'll have to see what exactly they can get done with that mana lead. Drainer might be able to sneak off for a drink at this point in the game as he does move behind the pillar, looking like he wants to go for that drink attempt as Nerd Rage and Cervantes going to be relatively healthy. If Drainer can completely recover his mana, it's going to be a great spot to be in. And Poike moves in looking for a vortex, does manage to find it. So all basically Drainer was able to get done right there was force when Poike to push in and also just waste a bit of time, unfortunately, for him. But changed my mind really wasn't able to get too much rolling. If we look at cooldowns, Nerd Rage still has his Trinket Die by the Sword available. If he needs to, he's going to be heroic leaping away. Acro Shadow Steps there. Cervantes with a beautiful Death Grip, freeing up Nerd Rage just a little bit. Drainer forced to connect the Life Cocoon. Unfortunately for them, now burning through a lot of the defensive cooldowns with Poike pushing to get aggressive, looking for crowd control onto Drainer. And I, I, I honestly wonder, how many Polymorphs has Fried Kitty been able to sneak in in this matchup? I, I, I don't even I think it's been one, one yet. Well, yeah. there's one. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Good setup. I changed my mind. All three members crowd control. Cervantes uses Icebound Fortitude to activate Anti-Magic Zone to exchange. So Cervantes throws away his personal defensive lineup to save Nerd Rage in his moment of vulnerability. And as the Death Knight before dampening, I think that's a that's not even a risk to take. That's just the right move. So Nerd Rage activating those before he gets cycloned and can't do so. Good reaction time on Cervantes' part. That's going to allow them to get more aggressive. What can they get done with that aggression? Doesn't look to be like too much. His Drainer's back at the pillar. Nerd Rage is taking huge pain right now in midfield. Drainer fair trade on this blind with the Glider's Medallion. I'm not sure if the Life Cocoon was really necessary with Acro sitting a full intimidating shout. Maybe more of a precautionary measure on Drainer's part. Drainer rolls in for the leg sweep, but Acro didn't get hit. Potentially he could save Fried Kitty's Ice Block with a kidney shot here. Ice Barrier, Frost Nova. Seems to be enough for Fried Kitty to stall. No ice block force, although now mana in favor of Drainer's side. Acro gets disarmed during this kill window attempt on Nerd Rage at the Frozen Orb. Good defensive play on his part with that Warrior. Minpoike, though, snuck away. And the mana lead that I said was in favor of Drainer is now significantly in favor of Change My Mind. Yeah, Minpoike consistently throughout the entire day has been doing an excellent job running away, making sure he can get the drinks off when he needs them. Now Drainer looking to recover his mana as Nerd Rage heroic leaps behind the pillar, and we're looking at a full reset on mana. The Pumpers managed to secure their mana lead, and that's definitely a spot you want to be in at 3% dampening, as it's unlikely later on in the game you can recover that precious mana when healing becomes just so difficult to get off. Fried Kitty getting low. Gladiator Safeguard and Ice Barrier are going to proc to keep him alive, but he gets Death Grip on his double blink. Now in a lot of trouble, forced into the first ice block of the match. Yep, the Pumpers stay in it here. They want to stay alive in the lower bracket. They face elimination. It's match point. Potentially their shot at qualifying for the spring finals. The Pumpers cannot afford to lose this series, but change my mind have been so dominant throughout the day. What can they get done? Drainer's trying to lead the charge. Gets caught in center field with the Polymorph. Dyer's Maledict soaking up any incoming heals. Nerd Rage in desperation. Tries to fear up the whole team. Acro trinkets and gets the sap. Looking for some crowd control onto the trinket. But there's no trinket even available. Drainer continues to be crowd controlled. The Nerd, Nerd Rage's defense has been cracked. He's desperate, but Fried Kitty as well. With a stolen Polymorph rotated around on him in Poike. The second ice block has been forced, and suddenly both teams are running on empty. Yeah, but the Pumpers, they still have a massive lead. Nerd Rage with this 
with Trinket, Drainer with Trinket, Life Cocoon. They should have enough tools to make the final push here onto Fried Kitty. Are they going to be able to do it? Full blind on Drainer. He's opting to actually just sit it. Acro with no Vanish available is unlikely to find a sap. Looks like Fried Kitty's going to get denied on follow Polymorph as well. And that was a good read by Drainer, realizing the situation. Now a cheap shot coming in from Acro. What is Fried Kitty going to do? Looking for a Polymorph, gets denied. Drainer doing an excellent job running to the Blizzard. Even when he got Polymorph there, would have just broke instantaneously. And that's the kind of positioning and offensive play we love to see from Drainer in this matchup. Mirror Rage and Survive is always back uh -oh. up, just making it so difficult. Fried Kitty with the Icy Veins, though, sneaks in a Polymorph. Who are they going to go after? Mirror Rage taking a little bit of damage. Full Kitty shot secure there by Acro. Can change my mind, take him down. And Poiken needs to set up for a Cyclone. He jumps into midfield, but he's too late. Crowd control chain has been dropped. Now he's got Way of the Crane. Drainer could just get the kill right here. And now Way of the Crane gets popped. They're looking to close it out here. They need it. Can they stay alive on their worst pop possible map? And Poiken tries to deny. Fake casting some interrupts, trying to find a Cyclone. Not able to. All three members connecting. Fried Kitty trying to utilize that Blizzard to avoid damage as long as possible. With no Ice Blocks, it's a scary moment. But he's managed to make it out at least alive to this point. Acro rotted down. Mana still tied up here at 17% dampening. Trainer gets Shadow Step kicked. Acro trying to set up for some burst here. Flurry combo. Frozen Orb nailed down. Smoke Bomb gets dropped. Drainer gets cheap shot. Where's the Polymorph? Fried Kitty blinks into the bomb to avoid being gripped or interrupted. Perfect positioning. Perfect execution. Drainer denies the kill for a little bit longer, but then gets cycloned at low health by Minpoike. Can Minpoike rotate this over? Fried Kitty's moving forward like they want to lock Drainer out of this. Nerd Rage denies the connect with a double intimidating shout, stalling it out and allowing his team a few moments to breathe. Neither side really working with a lot in terms of cooldowns, and it's still anyone's match. Well, here's the problem for Drainer. Acro has his blind coming back up, and Drainer's not going to have anything ready for it. If Acro can land the full blind on Drainer with Vendetta on Nerd Rage, it's going to be disastrous for the pumpers. Change my mind. They just have to make sure they're patient with this last offensive push of potentially the game. If they can pull it off, if Fried Kitty has the damage, could be an easy win here for Change My Mind. This is it. Full blind on Drainer. What are they going to get done? Let's see if they can get the kill. Change My Mind look to assert dominance as the third seeded team at the moment in the Europe region. Triple crowd control. Minpoike sifted through some interrupts. The anti magic zone is the only line of defense. Nerdrage doesn't care. Throwing caution to the wind. Trying to get a kill at the same time as he could go down. He has to abort the mission. Leaping back to the pillar. Manages to stay alive. Not over committing there. Now he's got to die by the sword to work with. Minpoike still aggressively positioned. Working through more interrupts, but Fried Kitty doesn't have a lot. That uh, overaggression position might cost him the game here. Fried Kitty, multiple Maledicts flying in. Way of the Crane is pumping. The Pumpers look to close up. And Poiki gets Ring of Peace on his Nourish cast. He gets gripped on the follow up. Where is the denial? They have to stop Min Minpoike from dealing any nourishes. Not able to find it. Nerd Rage preemptively die by the swords to try and avoid kidney shots and try and stay alive. And Cervantes uses Icebound Fortitude to get a kill. It's do or die. Yeah, definitely a lot of trouble for both teams. Drainer gets interrupted. Nerd Rage could fall it potentially as well. Fried Kitty has some Paul Shield looking to deny the damage, but Nerd Rage may have overstayed his welcome. Drainer finds the leg sweep, but a kidney shot on Nerd Rage denies his damage. And Fried Kitty only has 10 seconds left on that icy veins. If they can hold on to that point, which it's looking like they can with Minpoike throwing out the iron bark. I think the change in my mind will be able to find the kill, but Drainer still has his Trinket and Life Cocoon to potentially deny as well. No blind threat still from Acro for about another minute. So Drainer's going to be feeling confident. Oh, right, Kitty gets lower. Can Nerd Rage take him down? Acro saves today with the kidney shot. Cervantes trinkets out, gets cheap, cheap shot on it. But once again, Drainer there to seal the deal, close out the game. Rising Sun in their favor. If the meta shifts and they stay consistent, they could be a top contender. If they can diversify moving into the future, they still could remain a contender. But either way, things need to change for them, I think, for them to go all of the way. Well, Valet didn't necessarily have a roster last year where he got to play as much as he wanted to, to say the very least. And now he has one of the perfect opportunities. He feels like not only does he have the team to do it, but also we're going to see a meta that's going to work in his favor as well. Let's see if Olay and Change My Mind can close it out here and send the pumpers packing. Well, things are looking very good for them. We have a nice wide open map with Ashamane's fall. And I would say compositionally, Change My Mind definitely has an advantage, but it took them up to upwards of almost 60% dampening, 55% dampening to actually land a kill. And at that point in the game with an Arms Warrior with Sharpened Blade, he can limit healing so much with his Mortal Wounds effect as well as Sharpened Blade that anything can truly happen. Valet, if he gets a little bit behind, overlaps, you know, Dispersion and his Void Shift, the Pumpers will be able to completely take advantage of that. 
So I've changed my mind. They're just going to have to play it smart, calm, cool, and collected, wait for their advantage. This sort of triangle formation where you have Valet on one side of the field, Fried Kitty on the other. Valet gets gripped in, asphyxiate. What is Valet going to do? Fried Kitty trying to punish the pumpers here by blinking in, dropping a frozen orb as well as a blizzard, but it's not going to be getting too much done. Oh, and we do see the pumpers trying to employ the strategy of playing at the pillar and death gripping in a target into a stun and bursting it down. And this is the most effective strategy for their composition matchup. They were able to pull off a victory against all odds versus ABC on, to on the same map earlier today. So it's definitely a possibility. Although the composition is slightly different with the Shadow Priest instead of the Elemental Shaman, the one main advantage that Valet brings to the fight is effectively a third similar effect to ice block with void shift so let's say they burst down fried kitty they get one ice block they burst him down again a few moments later and get the second ice block there's then a third defensive option with void shift from the shadow priest that jamie d on the elemental shaman earlier today doesn't bring so with that added defense when it becomes that race to the finish deep into dampening having that third edge in your pocket to switch your health with your arty member might give them that extra bar of health to find a kill they're gonna grip and poike in try and go for a bit of a surprise attack and poike really not getting caught off guard at all it doesn't even trade a bark skin looking like he's just gonna walk it off yeah and he will be fine cervantes looking to still make a push but Really not able to find too much damage on my Poike, and he should be fine. Like you kind of talked about, change my mind. They have a lot of defensive cooldowns at their disposal, and it's one of the reasons why the Pumpers has such a difficult time actually finding the damage. Fry Kitty, with the, the build he's playing, he is going to have very empowered Frostbolts um, with the Lonely Winter, as well as the Tunnel of Ice Frostbolt build. That basically means that if Cervantes and Nerd Rage are in the open, they're training down Filet. Fried Kitty's really going to be able to punish them with that single target damage. And you find moments like these where Drainer is caught into a polymorph. Cervantes forced to trade out not only his Fire Blood Racial, but the Anti Magic Shell in order to keep up time onto Filet. But Poik has just been able to easily heal through this damage so far. Yeah, Nerd Rage now on the back foot, down at half with Drainer still locked down in crowd control. Can they keep Drainer out of the fight long enough to kill Nerd Rage? Is now the question it doesn't look to be the case nerd rage now looks to reverse some pressure Minpoike responds and with that guy's medallion nerd rage has to retreat but he's been left alone for quite an extended period of time and drainer is across the universe in crowd control both nerd rage and cervantes getting bursted down cervantes a good backup disrupting that ray of frost we do see the rallying cry of nerd rage boosting his health long enough for drainer to hopefully make his way back into line of sight but nicely with counter spell he's not able to fake it nerd rage still in trouble as Fried Kitty looks to close out the series, is Nerd Rage going to respond in time? He's trying to hold on to Die by the Sword, but the longer he holds on to it, it's a risky gamble. Now Cyclone at low health in that life cocoon. Change my mind's crowd control is on point. Yeah, definitely. Minpoike with Cyclones all day has been firing on all cylinders. Now Drainer caught into a polymorph with no Gladiator's Medallion available. Nerd Rage in a lot of trouble. He heroic leaps across the map trying to avoid damage at all costs. Can Fried Kitty and Valet get in position? Unfortunately not. Drainer with Tor Chi Torpedo was able to cross the map and reconnect with Nerd Rage, topping him off. But this is a situation the Pumpers don't want to find themselves in. All three members, no Gladiator's Medallion available. If Valet, Fried Kitty, and Mpoike can find optimal crowd control here, they can definitely close out this game. Mpoike doing a great job sitting down looking for a drink. Nerd Rage and Cervantes trying to punish that by attacking Valet. They do manage to force out the Iron Bar from Mpoike, but unfortunately, really, that's all they're getting. And Mpoike was able to completely reset his mana. Yep, good moves on Mpoike's part to secure a late game advantage facing down the pumpers as it is likely to go to the 40%, 50% dampening mark before Cervantes becomes a target. Nerd Rage, so long as he saves that heroic leap to run away, will be also difficult to pin down, which is why they need that 50% dampening mark to kill the Death Knight Cervantes right when Nerd Rage tries to disengage from the fight. So, change my mind, setting themselves up effectively in the matchup. There's no real openings here for the pumpers. And I don't believe Cervantes is running the Dark Simula from Honor Talent instead going for more consistent damage and losing out on that opportunity to get extra crowd control for his team to net a kill. Perhaps a mistake to opt out of that Honor Talent overall here. It's still match point. The Pumpers face elimination. If they lose this, they lose an opportunity to overthrow ABC's fourth position and potentially even change my mind's third place position if they can go all the way. Right now, it's not looking too good.
Yeah, Cervantes, he actually is opting into Transfusion instead, so that's going to allow him to get off more Death Strikes in a dire moment, but it doesn't seem like he'll get too much value out of that, especially if Nerd Rage is the main target here for Change My Mind, so maybe a misplay by Cervantes, but I can't blame him. He wants to make sure he can be as durable as possible, so Change My Mind only really has one solid target to go after in this matchup. Drainer still with no Trinket. Makes the pumpers very vulnerable. Life Cocoon going to get traded out before the silence. Nicely done by Drainer. And I really like what Drainer's been doing in this tournament with these preemptive Life Cocoon plays. It is a short cooldown, so just trading it out to try to avoid damage as much as possible before going into crowd control allows his team a little bit of freedom. But with that Cyclone coming in from Poike, denying a lot of that effective healing from Nerd Rage and the Life Cocoon, now the pumpers could be in some trouble. 11% dampening. Nerd Rage trying to line of sight the best he can. Fried Kitty there, though, drops a blizzard and a ray of frost as Nerd Rage dips behind oh. the pillar. Can he just take him down with this ray of frost? Isn't able to quite find enough damage, but Nerd Rage just hiding, running for his life as Drainer's caught in crowd control across the map. He looks like he's lost right now, just waiting for his healer to get back to him here behind the pillar. They stalled it out. Counterspell still available. Drainer has to deal with that threat. He fake casts the counterspell, gets through it. Easy, breezy. Nice job, Drainer. Now stabilized and having a second chance at life here in this tournament overall. If they can somehow manage to overcome Ashamane's fall, they already took Tolveron Arena out of the pool. There's really nowhere left to go except Mugumbala, which is chaotic to say the least. If you're changed my mind and you have to go there, you're not feeling too comfortable. Yeah, and I really like Nerd Rage's positioning. So basically what happens is Drainer gets caught in crowd control, and when Nerd Rage has his Heroic Leap available, he crosses the entire map. Basically what that does is it means Fry Kitty has to make a choice. I mean, Poike has to make a choice. Do they push? Do they get the damage on Nerd Rage, or do they follow up the crowd control? And often they can't do both, so they don't have the damage to take down Nerd Rage while also crowd controlling Drainer. That gets Drainer out of crowd control and allows him to actually heal up Nerd Rage. So I think him Heroic Leaping across the entire map uh, breaking up um, his LOS from Drainer uh, limits the amount of damage and crowd control change my mind can really get out. And now the Pumpers looking for an offensive push here onto Valet. Valet could be in some trouble. Dispersion is forced out and there is a full fear going out on him and Poike from Nerd Rage. Beautiful intimidating shout. Valet in a lot of trouble right now. Caught into the Storm Bolt. What is he going to do? He still has the Void Shift but with no Iron Bark from Poike, they might be able to force it out. But unfortunately, doesn't look like they will be able to. Frog Kitty trying to counter pressure the best they can. Iron Bark now available from Poike will be traded out with the Vampiric Embrace from Valet. And I think Valet should be able to stabilize here with a full bash onto Nerd Rage. A beautiful preemptive life cocoon once again coming in from Drainer will keep Nerd Rage alive. I mean, Valet will stabilize for now, but there's actually a big window here in 10 seconds when Drainer comes out of these polymorphs to just wave the crane and just knock Valet out cold. I mean, I, I really want to see him go for it. What, what else can they do? This is their only opportunity. They've still got a couple more seconds to do it. He's on Polymorph Diminishing Return. Not on Cyclone, though, and unfortunately walking into one of those. Nerd Rage tries to duck for cover around the pillar. Valet hunting him down. Fried Kitty repositioning that triangle positioning to cut Nerd Rage off with one member of the team on one side. Drainer able to portal back in line of sight. No counter spell, so he should easily top Nerd Rage off. Now Valet is overextended. This is where I want to see the wave of the crane from Drainer. Why aren't they going for the big push? Maybe he's afraid of getting polymorphed. And Poike sits down for a drink, and they don't go for a big push. And Poike gets full mana. They don't even get a void shift. This game is slipping away from the pumpers. Yeah, Valet still a little bit low as Minpoike Maybe gets not. gripped in. Leg sweep onto Valet. Safeguard does proc. What is Valet going to do? He gets the armbar from Minpoike. Should be able to stabilize in this moment. But with a polymorph onto Drainer, Nerd Rage is increasingly vulnerable. Good uptime here from the pumpers. Allows them good pressure onto Valet, but now Ru Nerd Rage having to heroic leap away. Throws out his intimidating shout on him and Poike. Stormbolt on Fried Kitty. Really looking to get some cooldowns here from Valet, but I think it's going to be Nerd Rage that's in trouble. Valet getting chopped up. Both teams in trouble. Dampening a double edged sword as it reduces incoming healing on both sides. And Poike locked out in crowd control. No iron bar for six more seconds. Valet starts to stabilize. Drainer reads the incoming crowd control. Preemptive light activates life cocoon, allowing Nerd Rage to get more aggressive, potentially put Valet down. Valet, smartly so, has saved his Gliders Medallion so he can pair that for a Void Shift if he needs to. I love this awareness from Cervantes. He knows that Nourish is a big threat in terms of being able to kill the target. So Cervantes always moves slightly over to interrupt Minpoike there with his Ghoul and then burst the target down. This extra crowd control from Cervantes has been 
why they were able to find victory in the past, but even still falling behind with two members low on the team, almost no mana left in the tank for Trainer. Dampening gets higher and higher. Cervantes then becomes a liability at that point. Still not much defense for Valet. Minpoike jumps in, but he gets intercepted by an incapacitate. Fried Kitty gets a ring of peace on the poly, but Valet is there to follow up with the psychic scream. Minpoike moves in for the clone. Two members in trouble. Dampening very high. Fried Kitty can get a polymorph off the back end of this bash. Nerd Rage is likely to fall. It's do or die at this point. He's trying to push in for the kill. The defense has finally been cracked. Both sides in trouble, but Nerd Rage is going to fall first. Change my mind. Clean it up. 3-1 the pumpers and establish their third place position. Look at this bracket right now. It's down to the top feed versus the fake zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in battle for Azeroth.